Uh, so I, I'm, I'm uh, Stephen T. Lawick. Uh, I've been uh, maintaining uh, VC's, uh, Visual C++'s, Plus's STL implementation uh, for five and a half years working with Dave the original authors. Uh, and today I'm here to talk about uh, Regex, uh, which was originally Boost Regex, uh, implemented by uh, John Maddock. Uh, and then uh, VC's Regex was implemented uh, by Dinkumware. Uh, so I didn't write it, uh, but uh, I get to read all of the incoming bug reports. Uh, so I've uh, I know things about writers that mortals probably should not know. Um, and so today I'm going to go into uh, the grammar uh, of regex, uh, what you can use it for, uh, what code using it actually looks like, uh, and some fairly complicated things that you can do with it, uh, which you might not have seen before. Um, so uh, first I'd like a four-way vote. Who has extensively used uh, boost regex or std regex? Anybody? Okay, some people. Who has used them a little? Uh, okay, some moderate familiarity. Who has used regular expressions either in another C++ library or in another language? Okay, um, and then who has heard of regular expressions but never really used them and you want to know what this is all about? Okay, so actually a decent familiarity with regular expressions. Okay, awesome. Uh, so first, what can you do with regular expressions? The thing about um, Stirred Regex and Boost Regex is that they are very powerful Regex libraries. Um, other languages you can just like match, get a yes or no, and you're done. Um, with uh, Stirred and Boost Regex, uh, and I'll, I'll be covering their common interface here, Boost Regex is strictly more powerful. You can actually do a bunch of cool things. Uh, the simplest thing you can do um, is just validation. Users love giving you garbage. You know, you ask for how old they are, they say meow. Um, so you want to validate you know, that input. Uh, is it well formed? And you get, just get a yes or no. That's the first step. Um, sometimes you might have input that you know is good, but you want to know which set of possible inputs it belongs to. For example, you might have a valid file name. It came from your file system, so you know it doesn't have like, you know, backslashes in it. Um, but you want to know, you know, is it a JPEG, is it a ping, you know, what's the extension? Uh, you can do that with Regex as well. Uh, you can get more advanced. Um, if you have data coming in a known format, you know, say 5 slash 17 slash 2012, um, you might want to extract the year. And yet you don't want to write a whole sphere of ground. Now certainly if you're doing any advanced parsing, then yeah, use Spirit um, or, or another grammar like that. But if you're doing something relatively simple, hey, a monkey man uh, grammar will work. Uh, Regex is actually pretty good for that. Um, you can also do transformations. Um, and this is actually cool because uh, Chandler was just showing us AST transformations. If you just want to do straight up string transformations, uh, Regex is great for that. Um, so not just uh, string literal, string literal transformations, but anything that matches a pattern, you can swap chunks of your pattern around, replicate them, drop parts. Uh, I've got an example of that. And then the two most powerful things that Regex can do um, is iteration and tokenization. So perhaps you have a very long string, you know, some email message, you know, some, some input you've gotten, and you have parts of it that you're interested in. Maybe you want to scan for all dates, all URLs, all usernames. Um, if you can describe what you want with a pattern, um, then you can iterate through it and look at only what you're interested in and then crack it open. Uh, you can also describe what you don't want. You can say, I'm not interested in spaces and commas, give me everything else. Or I'm not interested in brackets and other punctuation. Or maybe I'm not interested in alphanumeric characters. Uh, you can split apart a string. This is like stir toke on crack on fire and not horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what tokenization does. Uh, so, oh, crack is not horrible. Okay, yes. yeah, <laughs> you'll see. Um, so these are all the things that Regex can do for you, but you're probably saying, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm an expert C++ programmer. I can just write all this by hand, you know, plus plus, you know, care pointer. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to? Why would you not want to do that? Well, the answer is that it is incredibly flaky to do that. Having written string processing is hard to get right. It's insecure. It is even if even with string considerators, you know, it's insecure because you could easily. You know, it, say, say the user giving you garbage data and you don't detect that garbage data, you let it through to the rest of your pipeline and haha, now they can't exploit it. Uh, if you use regex, uh, what you do is instead of having control flow, ifs, uh, whiles, hopefully no go-tos, um, you get rid of all that control flow and your actual C++ code becomes straight through. Declare your regex, uh, construct it, call your regex match, your regex replace, um, and then go look through your submatches, you're done. No ifs, no incrementing, no nothing. Um, so the regular expression itself, it's describing what you want. You simply say, I want alphanumeric and then some digits, and you don't care how the matching is actually performed. You know, that's, that's a, a black magic. But uh, even if the regular expression is extremely intricate, and yeah, they can get kind of horrible, um, always be comparing it mentally to what you would have to do by hand. And that is usually an order of magnitude uh, more horrible. 
Uh, the other cool thing about regex in Boost and uh, C++11 is that it very much follows the STL philosophy of being abstracted away somewhat um, from the characters you're operating on and the string types that you're actually storing. So you could be working with Pascal stars, std strings, or even your own custom string types. Regex doesn't care. Well, it cares a little. It wants bidirectional characters. But aside from that, it really doesn't care. Uh, OK, so a quick uh, overview of regular expressions. You're pretty familiar, so I'll, I'll go through this very fast. Um, when I say regular expression, it's a pattern. The, the pattern is conceptual. We write it down as a string, because that's all we can type into our keyboards. You should really be thinking of it as a pattern. Um, and then this pattern, which is encoded in a non-deterministic finite state machine, you apply it to a target string. And you can do several things with it. Map, search, and replace. These are actually the algorithms um, in Boost and Stick Regex. Um, replace actually uh, will take a format pattern, a format string, which is a, a simpler, separate grammar. Um, and then this act of applying a regex to a target string is just known as matching. Uh, I'll probably be saying that even when I really mean searching or replacing, uh, just because that's internally what the right extension is doing. Uh, so as I'm going through here, if you've got questions, you'll just stop me and say, hey, STL. Uh, OK, so quick, quick, what grammars can regex <coughs> use? The answer is ECMAScript. It is the default. It's the best grammar. What it really is, it's the standardization of JavaScript. Uh, and its regex was derived from Perl. Uh, which is a very popular, very common regex. Um, it's the most powerful as well. There's a bunch of regex features. Actually, Pete Becker's TR1 book, book goes into all the features that regular expression grammars have. ECMAScript has all of them, except for one really obscure octal escapes. <coughs> for some reason, they standardized all these other grammars, BREs, ERES, awk. Don't use them, seriously, unless you like need to imitate these tools. I don't even know why they standardized them. I don't understand why they're a boost regex. Why do they put them instead only to make standard library implementers' lives miserable? Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, ECMAScript, yes. Um, OK, so capture groups, um, which you may be less familiar with, uh, these are essentially parentheses in your regular expression. Um, they, they group things, uh, as we'll see for precedent, but they also identify specific parts of your regular expression that you can refer to later. Uh, this is extremely useful if you're uh, not just doing a yes or no validation, uh, but you're also cracking open what match and figuring out, okay, I've got your month, day, I want to find the day, I want to find the year, and then go interpret that as an int. Or if you're doing a replacement, okay, I want to find the user's last name and put that first, drop the middle initial, things like that. Um, and by capturing things, that's how you can do replacements with things other than just straight up string literals, as we'll see. Uh, so precedence. I have seen, uh, often in users' bug reports, that people don't really seem to understand regular expression precedence, and which we all should have learned in grade school. Uh, and this can lead them to write just really complicated regular expressions with like extra parentheses. That actually makes them look even more horrible and less efficient. Like when you write a capture group, uh, the regular expression engine really has no choice but to capture that data. Um, so you should learn the precedence and the syntax and write regular expressions that are as simple as possible. I've seen people literally send me um, pages of regular expression, and then I have to go reduce them and figure out, OK, why are we doing something bad? Uh, yeah, question? Maybe change like a tool to simplify the regular expression. <laughs> that would just identify, hey, you're giving a string little to a regex that's more than 500 characters. Maybe you should think about this a little. That would be awesome. Uh, OK, so here, um, this sort of hello world regular expression, AB plus C or D, demonstrates all of the different things um, about precedence. you got your elements for the building blocks, like B. Um, they just match a particular string or set of uh, a particular character or set of characters. Uh, quantifiers bind most tightly. So when I say A, B plus C, I'm saying I want an A followed by one or more Bs. I'm not saying I want one or more A, Bs. Um, and then concatenation binds next. Uh, and then finally, alternation. It binds the most weakly. So I'm not saying like A or B plus and then C or D. It's A, B plus C or D. Um, and this is actually sort of extremely useful. Um, usually you don't need parentheses. But when you do, um, they create elements for grouping. So if I say parenthesis A or B plus, this will match any sequence of one or more A's or B's totally intermixed. Um, and this is, this is very descriptive. I could write a program um, by hand to match all of this. But here, look, it's just you know four characters or six characters. Done. Uh, so there's other types of elements. We've got our ordinary characters. Uh, they match themselves. Uh, by default, you get case-sensitive matching. But there is a flag, regex i case, that will request case-insensitive. Um, and then a whole bunch of special characters. 
um, all of these activate uh, special things um, in your regular expression grammar. Uh, the dot wild card matches any single character except for new lines. Um, <coughs> There's actually a flag, um, and I believe it's in Boost Regex, that actually turns off that except new line part, so it'll match literally any single character. And working from memory, I don't believe that was standardized uh, in C++11. The interesting thing about Boost Regex is it's more powerful than uh, Sturd Regex. That extra power is sometimes useful, not always. Um, so if you find yourself wishing for those flags, you may want to use Boost Regex. Um, but uh, the except new line part is often useful, uh, so that's why it's the default. And then these anchors, a carrot and dollar, will match uh, empty substring. So they don't actually match characters, but they're a sort of positional match. So that way you can anchor your regex to match only at the beginning or only at the end, uh, which is often useful. Uh, uh, other elements you can have are ranges. Uh, so you can say, I want to match all the characters A through Z. Sometimes restricted ranges are more useful. Uh, 0 through 9, 1 through 9 can be useful because there's no special um, abbreviation for that if you don't want to match the zeros. Um, you can also negate ranges. So here I can say, I want to match anything but a B followed by AT. So I'll match AAT, CAT, 3AT, uh, just not banned. Um, and I can also, I can put multiple characters in their ranges. I can mix them. So I could say AZ, capital A, capital Z, 1 through 9, underscore, uh, things like that. Um, one of the things that C11 also permits is character classes. There's a whole bunch of named character classes. You can find this in your documentation. Um, hex digit, alnum, space, things like that, uh, which are more convenient to write, um, especially if you need to deal with your code, um, than manually spelling out um, alphanumeric plus underscore, things like that. You can also negate character classes. Um, it's very easy to just think of it as a double bracket and then a colon next digit, uh, but it's really this single bracket colon next digit that's the name of the character class, and the outer bracket um, is the bracket expression. So you can totally stick a knot in there or add extra things in there. It's totally fine. Um, other elements, so backslash is sort of the Pandora's box. It sort of opens up everything. Um, you got your special character escape. So if you want to literally match a dot or backslash, you say backslash dot or backslash backslash. Um, you've got back references, which are not quite regular expression. Of, probably every time you say back references, you know, you give a CS professor a heart attack. Not strictly regular, um, but hey, everybody's reg X has them, so does that script. Uh, you can match new lines or uh, vertical tabs, not that anybody uses those. Um, you've got the extremely useful DSW escapes. So you can say, I want to match any digit, that's just 0 through 9, um, or any white space that spaces and tabs. So try not to hard code spaces if you really mean spaces and tabs. Um, and then also back W is quite useful. Um, that matches alphanumeric plus underscore. Hey, those are the characters that are permissible in C++ identifiers. Uh, identifiers just have the restriction that if you want to name, it can't be a digit. You can also capitalize any of these to match anything that's not. So you can say, I want anything that's not a digit, not a white space, uh, not a word. Uh, word boundaries are useful. I mean, other grammars, this is like backslash less than and backslash greater than. Um, in ECMAScript, it's just backslash little b, and that'll match a boundary of a word. I use this all the time when grepping. I say, uh, because I don't have an advanced you know, AST matcher, I want to search for all occurrences of back b, get back b, and that'll find any word that's back, uh, that's get. Uh, without being a substring um, like getter. Um, not that I have getters in my own source code. Um, backslash capital B is the opposite. I've actually never had to use that one, uh, but it could be useful. You've got a few other escapes in there. Uh, again, feedback was broke is extremely useful. Um, question? So, Sorry, uh, yeah, question. Uh, what's the difference between slash D and the X digits? Slash, slash what? Slash D for and, and the X digit from, from previous. Oh, oh, um, okay. So, X digit is a hexadecimal uh, digit. Uh, uh, this will match. O through 9, A through F, and capitals. Got it. Whereas little d is literally digit. Got it. Um, there's also a digit class, but why spell out double bracket colon digit when you could just say backslash little d? Right. Uh, there's only so many letters in English, so we can't have like, you know, backslash H for hex 18, things like that. So they've almost used every single possible letter, of course. X, X I, I don't know, that may actually be the hex escape. Yeah, um, that sounds right. Okay, so. About backslashes, uh, we've actually uh, had a couple other talks mention this. Um, because string literals in C++ um, have uh, special things like backslash n, if you want to present a backslash to the regex engine, you need to escape it for C++ first. This can look kind of ugly. Uh, if you want to match a file name, you've got to put a double backslash before that doc protect it. If you want literal backslashes, you need four in a row. This is nasty. Um, fortunately, if you have raw string literals, this can become uh, much easier to read 
Here, the only extra backslashing I have is to escape four regex. Uh, unfortunately, there's no, there's no regex string literal, which totally escapes everything. Uh, although there is, there is a boost regex flag, I believe, that just says, I've got a regular expression, but just treat it totally literally. Because not in struct regex, you can write a regex to escape everything. Um, fortunately, that almost never comes up. Uh, and then finally, the last kind of elements you can create are groups. Uh, so we've already seen this for overriding precedence, and I mentioned something about capture groups. Sometimes you just want to override precedence without capturing stuff for later use. Uh, for example, you're, uh, you want to refer to capture groups 1, 2, and 3, and you don't want all those numbers to be incremented by 1. In that case, question colon will create a non-capture group. Um, slightly more advanced, um, but it's often useful. Um, and uh, the ECMAScript grammar also has positive asserts and negative asserts. This is heading into expert territory. They are quite useful. And if you want to get even more crazy, um, the extended Perl syntax um, that Boost Regex supports has look behind assertions, um, all sorts of conditional assertions. Um, that's not in uh, Stoic Regex, um, but at least positive and negative asserts are. Uh, so the quantifiers I mentioned, these should be all quite familiar, uh, since you use our four stars or more, pluses one or more. Question is a little less used, that means optional. Um, you can also get exact numbers, inclusive, or just, you know, uh, three up to infinity. Uh, these are actually technically not necessary. We could always just write bracket or brace zero comma, um, but nobody wants to really write that all the time. They're just sort of abbreviations. Um, and for quantifiers, you can also make them non greedy How many people have heard of non greedy quantifiers? Okay, how many people is this totally new? Okay. Um, so I'll go really quick over this. Um, when you write um, a regex, the way that ECMAScript standard, which is horrible, specifies, <coughs> the regex is desperately going to try to match a target string. If there's any possible way that regex can match, it will. And then it's got crazy rules for which matches prefer. Um, now, if you're examining what the results of the match, or if you're uh, doing like a regex replace, then you might care what participated in the match. And that's where non greedy quantifiers come in. Uh, here, if I'm trying to match, uh, this may not be a super good example because of nesting. If I'm trying to match things between bold and not bold tags in HTML, dot star by default will be greedy, eat everything. If I say dot star question mark, then this will match the fewest number of characters necessary and yet have the match be successful. Uh, this is actually the source of a great many bugs in Regex engines. I don't know about Bruce, but certainly DC is in trouble with this. Uh, we believe we're correct now. As a PC <laughs> It's just the, the, the high level description of how a regex match is very beautiful, but to implement it with backtracking and all of that is extremely difficult. Um, and especially once you get into nested, greedy, and non greedy quantifiers, it's kind of a mess. Okay. Um, so I had mentioned that it was decoupled from what it really works with. So you can work with narrow strings, wide strings, iterators, or actual just uh, C strings. Um, or your user finds string types, not that you have any of those because you're all modern <coughs> programmers. Um, so there are general overloads that take iterator ranges, but there's also convenience interfaces. This is where Regex, Regex deviates a little from the STL line. Um, the pure STL says you're going to sort iterators whether you like it or not. No container overloads for you until we get you know, ranges. Um, whereas Regex does work with std strings and W strings uh, directly and consequence stars. Uh, so there are types, uh, there's not a whole lot of types of regex. It's actually halfway powered by algorithms, but these are the really important ones. Basic regex looks like a string, but it's really a not, uh, an NFA uh, or potentially compiled uh, to a DFA, a deterministic finite state machine. Um, it's a complex data structure. It's not uh, cheap to construct. It's kind of cheap, but it's got to do dynamic memory allocations, parse your horrible regex, um, and that sort of thing. So we'll see how uh, regex is actually uh, <coughs> built to avoid uh, constructing too many of these. Um, there's also a couple of helper classes. <coughs> Match results is sort of unique. It's a container that the regex library will fill for you. You can't fill it yourself. You can only inspect it. And it'll tell you uh, which parts of a regex match where. Um, and match results is really a container for submatch. Submatch will describe what part of a target string matched um, your capture group of a regex. Uh, and this is actually really cool. We'll, we'll see how this works. It's extremely efficient. Uh, fine. And then the algorithms I mentioned, match says, I want the regex to describe the entire target string. Where assert says, does the regex describe any part of my target string? This is where uh, student boost regex differ from other uh, regular expressions where 
uh, regular expression libraries or in other languages where search is the default. And you people have to uh, <coughs> surround the regex with caret and dollar to restrict it to matching everything. If you really want a whole string match, use regex match. Don't use regex search. Um, and then regex replace will do that transformation uh, with the format string. Uh, you have a couple optional things. Uh, by default, it actually does what it said would be s slash stuff slash stuff slash g for global. But if you really only want that first occurrence transform, there's a flag for that. Um, and you can also drop all the parts of the string that didn't match the regex, but by default, they're carried over. Uh, so you can say, I just want this whole string, but with every meow replaced with a per. If you only want the meows replaced with purrs, um, then you've got uh, a flag to do that. Um, and then the most powerful things are the regex iterators, which are sort of the most strangest, most unique uh, to study boost regex. Regex iterator will take the regex, iterate through all occurrences of that pattern in a string. It's really doing a repeated regex search and then presenting it to you. Uh, just as you can think of list iterator as no traversal, so putter equals putter arrow next in iterator form. Uh, regex iterator is repeated regex search in iterator form. And this is actually extremely important because while you can uh, iterate through list nodes, if you've got the data structure in front of you easily, um, Doing that with regex search is actually extremely difficult. <coughs> Three peak vectors to tell them for the details. And then regex token iterator is a refinement. It allows you to look at only the capture groups you're interested in, or potentially split. Uh, question? Yeah, uh, for the regex iterator, um, what happens when you have nested captures? Uh, oh, ne uh, nested <coughs> captures like paren, paren stuff. Uh, that's actually a, a concern even just for regex match and search. Um, there, the, the answer is just intuitive, except when your outer regga, uh, your outer capture group is quantified. If you're saying zero or more occurrences of this outer capture group, um, and then you've got an inner capture group, essentially every time it matches, it gets overwritten. Um, but aside from that issue, um, every time Reg Accelerator presents a new um, match to you, it's entirely fresh. You're not going to get stale results earlier on. Um, it's rerunning a completely new Reg uh, starting from where it left off, which is efficient. Um, if it had to go start from the old string, uh, from the beginning of the string, it could be caught in an infinite loop or just do unnecessary work. It essentially remembers where it left off. Okay. Um, okay, so there's a bunch of type depths. Um, these are all templates, of course, because they work with arbitrary character types. Just as basic string care is obnoxious to type, we can just say string. Uh, basic regex care, we can just say regex. For something like regex token iterator or string const iterator, you can just say regex token iterator. Please do. Don't use the templated forms unless you're working with actually templated uh, code. Um, there's also wide forms of this, of course. Um, it's like wc submatch, so it's really twice as many. Okay, uh, so now an example. Uh, any questions so far before we get to examples? Okay, so regex match, this is sort of regex match in 101. Um, suppose that I want to match a width and a height, maybe I'm looking at pixels or something. Um, and I want my numbers to begin with one through nine. So I don't want leaving zero. So I could say, I want anything that's one through nine, so I require at least one digit, um, and then followed by zero or more digits. Here I'm double backslashing because I don't have the roster literals. Um, and then x, literally x, and then the same thing repeated over. I'm going to read strings from standard input. This is very convenient to do so. And then I'm going to print if the string matches the regex, then print yes, otherwise no. So this will match single digits two by four. Uh, this will match 2560 by 1600. That's a great monitor resolution. Um, however, if you pass 007 by 006, this leading zero does not match the character class uh, one through nine. So that regex match will fail. And because I'm calling regex match, which demands that the entire regex match the entire target string, if I have something like A five by five B, even though a substring is described, the whole string is not, so I get the answer no. If I called regex search, the answer would be yes. So many people, when they get this code, they're like, why don't we go construct this regex out here? Can't I just slam it directly in line in regex match? And the answer is no. This is actually the only VC specific thing I'll show you. You get a horrible error. And this error, I believe, I, I assert without proof, it will also be horrible in claim. Um, even with those <laughs> plus, because it's such a high level, you'll see. Um, it'll, you'll get compiler errors, and it's going to say, in this case, blah, 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 I'll get into what it's complaining about. Now, in a magical world, what it would really say is Regex's constructor is explicit, because it's constructing this non-deterministic uh, finite state automaton, with, which is newing up a bunch of nodes and parsing this grammar. 
Um, we don't want you to accidentally do that. This is, this is significantly worse than a single dynamic memory allocation. So when you construct a regex, you need to give it a name. It needs to be with parentheses, not equal. That you'll actually get a good error for saying, hey, this constructor is explicit. Um, and that way you can reuse this regex over and over. If I have it, I usually just make my regex as const, and I just construct them as early as possible um, in my program. Now, as for this error here, uh, if you can interpret error novels, it probably makes immediate sense to you. What it's really complaining about is because regex is templated, so is regex manage. It's regex match taking some arbitrary basic regex of pair type. And it's not overloaded on std strings and uh, raw strings, so like uh, consecure stars. So what it is, it's a template and, what happens to the Oh, okay. Um, and the function signature is basic regex taking, uh, basic regex of elum and regex traits. And all that it is the type consecure star. And it's like, I can't make these identical. Um, if regex is, hypothetically, if regex has had an implicit constructor from strings, then regex match would also have been overloaded on consecure stars and st strings, and this would work. Um, so the compiler, it can't really hypothetically imagine what the standard committee would have done if regex's constructor was implicit. Hence this extremely confusing error. But hey, if playing actually emits a good error, I would like to know. I suspect it doesn't. Okay, so regex match, if you want to crack open uh, the results of our width by height, we can wrap the dimensions we're interested in in capture groups. This is not for precedence. Um, the original regex didn't need any parentheses to be correct. Uh, here I'm interested in the width and the height, so I wrap them in parens. I do the exact same match, but now local to my loop, I have a S match. This is a type def for match results of string constant iterator, so I just want a string match. Um, and then I call regex match, and I give the string the regex and this match results container. Match results actually has no modifying data members, but it grants friendship to regex match. That's how it can be filled with information. And then if the match succeeds, it returns a bool saying whether it matched or not. Then I can crack it open, and I can look at capture group number one, it's one indexed, um, by capture group number two, print out stuff. And because these are essentially strings, they're really submatches, I can even pass it to the new C11 string to int helper function that's like a boost lexical pass and actually intify those. And I can multiply them, proving them that proving that they really are ints, and I get the total resolution of my display. Is uh, yeah. zero, zero the whole string? Or zero? Yes, zero is the entire thing that matches the regex. In the case of regex match, M0 is never surprising. In the case of regex search, it is useful. Yeah, question. Playing their message is 27 lines long. Awesome! Wow. Yeah. Well, well, I actually, I only said that at first. We did have context, context, context. Yeah, yeah it's that was the context. first one. Okay, basically, awesome. Basically, it says no matching functions call to. Uh, right, because it can't see an overload, because it and can't do template argument deduction. Right, and then it lists all the overloads and all why, possible why it uh, rejected them. Okay, so yeah, basically the same as VC. Excellent. So Skynet is not yet about to take over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah? It seems that uh, you could actually include the error message by uh, putting in a function that That's matches deleted. that signature. Yes, that would be great. I would actually like that um, to be in the standard, because the standard specifies equal delete functions all the time. I should propose that. Uh, but of course, or, adding or a equal delete would be totally boring. Yeah, or a static assert. Yeah. I should don't know which one. Obviously, we don't have equal delete yet in VC. Um, both of both them might give, yeah, static assert would give us an opportunity to emit a totally descriptive error message. Hey, you shouldn't be calling this like this. That's a good idea. We should do that. Uh, so I've been repeatedly mentioning <laughs> regex search. Imagine I want to search for comments. Um, so this is more than a single character. Yeah, std string is all those find first functions. I count that as handwritten string processing. I don't even remember all of string's member functions, and I maintain a thing. Uh, instead, I want to use regex. So, exact same format. I construct a regex. I call regex search. Same argument order, SMR. I just actually remember those three letters. Okay. Um, and then I print out um, the suffix. So, this match results has a bunch of methods. If I call that suffix, it'll print out everything after what matched in my substring. So if I feed it in the string, nothing here, there is no match, I get false, and I just loop again. If I feed in plus plus i silly comment, then regex search will return true for the slash slash, and the suffix will be everything afterwards. Here I put some brackets here to show you that the space is counted as the rest of it. And regex search will look for the first occurrence. So if I have nested occurrences, or just repeated occurrences of slash slash, the first regex search will return true for this one, and I'll get the whole rest. 
If I was interested in every single occurrence of slash slash, I would want to use a regex iterator. I should absolutely not use regex search in a loop, um, looping over the single string. Uh, we'll see why. Um, so as for regex replace, I mentioned that there is a format string, a format grammar that it uses. This one is super simple. It's nothing like ECMAScript. Um, so here's just an example regex and a target string. Here I want AZ one or more, zero 09 one or more. Um, so these escape sequences, if I say $1, $2, I get the first capture group, the second capture group, so forth. I believe you can go up to double digits. Um, I think that varies by grammar, but I'm pretty sure ECMAScript is the one that lets you do double digits. If you want 11 capture groups or 10. Um, you can also say dollar ampersand. This is like plain ampersand in said syntax. This matches the whole, uh, the part of the target string that matches the whole regex. Uh, in this case, uh, this will match NCC 1701 only. If I say dollar backtick, maybe the only use of backtick in standard C++, mm -hmm. um, I get what appears before the whole regex. This is like dot prefix in a match result. Dollar single quote is what happens after. And if I need to escape the dollar itself, that's just double dollar. So an actual use of regex replace, here I'm getting more and more advanced from what I can do. Um, here I want to take people's names and put them last name first. So I'll iterate over strings from standard in, and I've described first name, optional middle name, last name, and then I want to write out, um, put the last name, comma, space, followed by the first name and that optional middle name. So I can put in all the various forms of my name, and it'll correctly put the last name first each time. So here, I had some latitude in how I wrote my regex. Here I'm saying, I'm going to consider my first name to be one or more alphanumeric characters. So this will accept underscores if I want to be you know, foo underscore bar. Um, same for the last name. And as for the middle name, what I'm saying is a middle name consists of one or more alphanumeric characters followed by a dot that's optional. This will handle a T dot. That will just consider it a middle name. There's lots of latitude here. I could restrict myself to not accept underscores and names, not accept digits, except some people actually do have digits in their names. Literally, not joking. Um, this does accept uh, people with names that have two characters and a dot. I actually thought of this, uh, but there are some Russian middle names that start with the character Y-U. And then when they're translated into English, it's Y-U dot. Um, so maybe I do want to accept that. But the whole point is that there's a lot of latitude in what I want to match, but it's all encoded into a single string. If this was represented by actual code, then if somebody came to me and said, wait, we need these four people with digits in their middle names, then I don't need to go modify that code. Um, with the regex, I would only need to modify this string. Um, I could even do so at runtime if I want, um, although hopefully not. Uh, so this is a sort of high level. Yes? So does the backslash w, does that work with uh, non-asking strings? Um, yeah, it will, it will work with Unicode. Um, I forget off the top of my head exactly how it's specified for Unicode. I think it expands to essentially double bracket LDOM, so it should have an understanding. But then you start talking about locales, and I can't recite from memory. Uh, but okay. but, uh, but Strict Regex is Unicode willing to work support, with Unicode. It wouldn't support you know, your local MBCS uh, Oh, multi-byte character? Yeah. No. Um, I don't believe Regex works with that, because it, it really wants to have one character equal Want one thing to match. Right. I, it, right. I don't think it works with that. Yeah, so MBCS is not bidirectional. That's right. Thank you. So, so UTF is right out too. Uh, no, yeah. UTF is it bidirectional. Is? Okay. I'm sorry. UTF eight. UTF eight can be is bidirectional. Yeah, it's bidirectional. Yeah, exactly. Because it's uh, what not context sensitive. Yeah. If you're looking at some some chunk of it. Okay. Give me question yeah. just to confirm that I'm understanding the format expression. Have you missed the space between dollar one and dollar two there? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So oh. the second capture group, I'm saying the second capture group is optional. But if I have a middle name, I'm considering the okay. middle name to include the space before it. So that's why I can just say dollar two here. If I did match a middle name, then I get that space. If I didn't match a middle name, then that dollar two is replaced with the empty string. So that's how I did it without any conditional logic at all. Okay, so that's regex replace. I've been mentioning submatch. Submatch is actually really simple. So you can imagine you're writing a regex library, you've got to present these submatches and capture groups. How do we do that? Could we just return like a string? Well, that would actually be inefficient because what if that submatch is large? We would need to copy all of those characters. Maybe the user isn't even interested in that. So regex has this brilliant design decision. 
where some match is actually a pair of iterators, so either string const iterators or const pure stars or what have you, uh, which is constant space, and it can be copied in constant time. And yet you can get its length in constant time, that's just a subtraction. And if you really want, it is convertible um, to a std string or w string, um, either implicitly or explicitly. So you can think of it as a string, but it's much more efficient than that. And it actually literally derives from a std pair of iterators. It has an extra bool uh, matched, which tells you whether the submatch participated in uh, the regular expression match. This would be useful in this regex replace, where if I don't have a middle name, then capture groups number two dot match would be false. Uh, so if I had a, an S match here, it would be, uh, two dot match would be false. I mentioned that match result is a container sub match. Um, I'll just go really quick over this. Um, yeah, they're friends, so they can fill them in. A match result is a bunch of member functions. Uh, basically, if regex match and search return false, then the regex match is going to consider itself em uh, the match result is going to consider itself empty. Don't look at the other methods. Um, that triggers undefined behavior. Otherwise, it's considered non-empty. The size is all captured groups in your regex, which if the regex was determined at runtime, you may be interested in. Otherwise, hopefully you know how many capture groups there were. M0 is the entire match, one and so forth. Um, it even has a format method that acts like regex replace. So after you get a, re uh, a match results, you can say, what if I formatted just this according to something else? Um, you can call format. It's the same underlying machine. So I've mentioned that if you repeatedly call by search, this is extremely bad. This is the first non-trivial mistake you can make with regex that will not be caught at compile time. You may be extremely tempted to use the iterator overload of regex search. Say, begin, end, let's search for what I'm interested in. Oh cool, I found a match, let's go do something with it. Then call regex search again with my iterator that was at the middle or at the end of the match that I got, and then just call regex search again. The deceptive thing about this is that it'll, it, it will work when you first try it. That's the worst possible case. Because as soon as your regex gets more complicated, it will blow up horribly. Uh, Pete Becker actually devoted um, a lot of text to describing how this explodes. The simplest way to remember it is, what if your regex is willing to match zero characters? Well, your naive loop will say, cool, I found zero characters. Cool, cool, cool. And it'll just infinitely loop. Um, also, if you have anchors and word boundaries, it will get confused about where the string began, where words began and ended, extremely bad. Um, just don't do it, it's terrible. Instead, there's this class regex iterator, which basically has figured out how to sidestep all of these problems by carefully tweaking various flags and then repeatedly calling regex search underneath the covers. It's no less efficient, it's easier to write, it's higher level, please use regex iterator, um, which is a Extremely useful. So what does regex iterator look like? Imagine I've got a bunch of text and it's mentioning various days of the week. I'm interested in all the days that have been mentioned. I'm not interested in anything else in the regex. So what I'm interested in is zero more words followed by day. I'm going to accept a string from standard input, just one, and then I'm going to iterate through it. And the way this loop looks is I'm going to construct a regex iterator. So this is a regex iterator of string constant iterator. Um, and I need to give it the beginning and end of my string and the regex I'm interested in. And then I need to give it an end iterator. And as long as I haven't hit the end, then dereferencing I will give me a match results. If I say bracket zero, then I'll get the entire uh, content of the regex match, which I'm interested in. And then I'll loop again. Uh, so this end here, this is default constructed, but that's okay. Because just like ice cream iterator, a default constructed regex iterator just knows it's the end. It's not pointing to anything in particular because until we actually loop through the string, we don't know how many occurrences there are. Um, so it's not horrible like it would be for vector iterator. Um, the other thing, a uh, potential gotcha, is that I mentioned that regex's constructor is explicit, but there's nothing stopping you from directly constructing a temporary. So if I said regex iterator i s begin s end regex parenthesis my string literal, that would actually compile, and yet it would do something very bad because the way that so regex iterator works is it's storing a pointer to the regex to use. It's not copying that whole regex inside its guts. That would be inefficient. It's just going to point to this regex. So if I gave it a temporary, it would accept it by const reference, and then you'd immediately get um, a dangling uh, pointer as soon as we loop. That would be very bad. Uh, question? I mean, even in C++ 3, you could force it to bind to an L value. Uh, but an L value is OK. Like here, this is an L value. It's just, I don't want to give it a temporary. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
if the signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a danger even in C plus or three. This is not C plus eleven specific. But what I'm saying is the signature of that sort of regex iterator could force the regex parameter to be a. Yes, it should. And I actually need to propose this to, to the committee. What this really should be overloaded as is it should take blah blah extra arguments, cons, and I'm omitting the fact that it's template wrap. This is the good constructor. Then it should be overloaded on const regex ref ref equals delete. This is essentially the only case I'm aware of where a const r value reference would be useful. This one will be willing to bind to modifiable or const l values, good. This one will bind to modifiable or const r values and be deleted. In basically no other situation do you ever want a const r value reference, but in this case you do. In uh, VC as of 10 and also in 11, we will detect this at runtime uh, using essentially our iterator invalidation logic in debug mode, where if you have a regex iterator that was constructed with a regex that has since been destroyed, we'll give you an assertion. But really, we should do it at compile time with this. Um, we haven't yet implemented that as an extension, but we should. We should standardize it. Yeah, question. It's very easy to support this case if regex is implemented as a you know simple. Mm -hmm. uh, then oh, just store a pointer to the guts and keep it alive with like a shared footer. Yeah, shared footer. We, we could do that. Um, Which is what Boost Expressive does, by the way. Yeah, the, the, as specified, I don't believe the standard certainly doesn't require that. Um, but it, it could be extended to permit it. I don't know how useful it is, though, to permit temporary regexes here. Because the whole point of regex is that constructing one is expensive. I don't want to do anything that encourages users to just throw them away. So. Okay, so what does this print? If I feed in the text here that mentions a bunch of things, I will get Monday, Tuesday, day by itself, and then cat or day, uh, because I was willing to accept zero or more alphanumeric characters. Uh, note that my regex just described zero or more alphanumerics followed by day, and then no other letters. So as I print out what matched, even if the string said Mondays, all I'm interested in is Monday. Just like I'm not interested in the space that occurred before or the comma that occurred after, none of that. It's extremely precise. I could have grabbed any extra alphanumeric characters after if I wanted. I would just need to go modify my regex. I'm um, showing how it's, it's just very easy to modify your data and affect the uh, control flow. Um, one interesting thing about the regex iterator, which I think is, it's not quite conforming to the standard. I've never, I've never figured it out because those iterator requirements are kind of tricky. Um, when you dereference the Sregex iterator, it returns a reference to a match result that lives inside the iterator itself. I think of this as a stashing iterator, because it stashed the reference inside itself. So this is okay as long as you don't increment that iterator. If you do, then that reference it returned will now be referring to something completely different. So if you do need to preserve that match results for later inspection, you should copy that out. I've never had to do that, but it's something you should think of. Um, this will work essentially with every STL algorithm, but it's not quite clear whether an iterator can return things inside itself, just like proxy iterators are quasi-supported by the standard. And of course, you can use arrow, it's always recommended. So finally, regex token iterator, which is sort of the, the capstone of the regex library, the most all-singing, all-dancing thing, the most powerful. Um, it wraps a regex iterator, so it's very much similar, except it's got slightly different constructor arguments. Um, and when you dereference it, instead of returning a whole match results, which is a container, it returns individual sub-matches. Um, so you can pick capture groups of interest. So you can say, I'm only interested in capture groups 1, 2, and 3, or just 1 and 2, or 1 and 3, um, and tell them to the regex token iterator, and those capture groups will be presented to you over and over. So here's capture groups 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, for each match. Um, so it's really adapting an iterator that itself is adapting the bidirectional iterator of your string type. Uh, the only double adapter I've ever seen. Um, well, I guess, I guess filter iterators also live in that category. Um, so the way you can specify capture groups, there used to be four, and now there's five of them in C++11. You can specify a single capture group um, that defaults to zero. You can have a vector of them, an array of them, or an initializer list of them, which I've not yet gotten to play with. Um, Using the zeroth capture group is extremely easy. This looks just like um, the regex iterator example. Here I've highlighted what's different. If I say regex token iterator, same constructor R, same default end, but instead of dereferencing the iterator to get match results and then saying, hey, I want everything, by default, you're going to get capture group zero. So you can just dereference the iterator and you're done. You've got your submatch. But what about that field splitting I mentioned? Um, yeah, question. 
do we always have to have the regex object as a constant object? Or? No, the regex can be modifiable and it does have an assign method so you can load it with different guts. So, so it does, does not have, have to be a group counts. of uh, regular expressions that they can iterate through regular expressions as well. You could. You can even have a vector of regex because it is copy constructible and uh, move constructible. Okay, and then finally, field splitting. If you ask for capture group negative one, well, there is no capture group negative one. This instructs the regex token iterator, give me everything that doesn't match this regular expression. So, stir token is terrible. It takes like a single character. It's working directly with raw pointers. It's not even thread safe on some implementations. It is on VCs. Um, that's terrible. Regex token iterator will accept arbitrary things described by a pattern, not just single characters, not just double characters, anything. Um, it doesn't have any reentrancy concerns. It's just you know completely iterator based. Um, and there's just one, one little gotcha it's got. I don't even consider it a gotcha, but everybody seems to be surprised. Um, it's the nature of what is a field splitter. And the way I remember it is they behave like new lines. So if your string ends with a field splitter, then every token that's presented to you will end with a field splitter, including the last one. If your string just ends abruptly, without any field splitter at all, then all your tokens end with either a field <coughs> splitter or the end of the string. And this is just like how new lines behave. So if you've got a file that doesn't end with a new line, well, you just think of that as the last line. But if you've got a file that does end with a new line, OK, that's still the last line. If you've got a file that begins with new lines, it has empty lines at the beginning of the string. <coughs> Many people, when they first look at how regex token iterator works, they think, oh, if the string begins with the field splitter, I just want to skip over it. I don't want a zero length match. That's not how it works. You can, of course, detect the length of the match and just say, wait, zero length, I don't care about that. So, Final example, here I'm going to describe what I'm not interested in. So I've got a comma separated list, sometimes with spaces around my comma, sometimes not. Sometimes my strings have spaces within. So I, I'm not interested in three things. Either the beginning of the string with leading white space, one or more, or zero or more white space followed by a comma, followed by zero or more white space, that's all this stuff in the middle. Or if I've got one or more white space at the end of the string, I don't want that either. So I've described what I don't want in the string. I construct a regex token iterator exactly the same loop as before, <coughs> except I give it a hard-coded negative one, and then I print out the match in addition to the length, just showing that I can get the submatches length, subtract those iterators in constant time. So because my string started with the field splitter, think of it as a new line. I've got an empty line at the beginning of my file. So I get an empty match of zero length. I could easily put an if test here saying, if length is over zero, then do something cool, otherwise ignore it. But this is how Regex right, token iterator works. Then I get matches, ape, bat, cat, dog, totally ignoring the spaces around the commas, just as I wanted. Um, and because I described what I don't want, um, and nothing of this Regex right, matches this single space inside Foxhound, this whole thing Foxhound is presented to me. And then finally, I drop the trailing white space. <coughs> so this, I think, is one of the prime examples uh, to use Regex. Right, so if you have further questions, um, I always suggest consulting the standard, because I can read it. Um, unfortunately, the standard, when it refers to the grammar of regular expressions, they sort of took a shortcut. They just said, go look at ECMA 262, which is the ECMAScript standard. That standard is horrible to read. Do not look at it for your sanity. Um, instead, read Pete Becker's TR1 book, which is still extremely relevant to C++11. Um, there's only a few minor differences. Um, which explains the grammar in a very simple to understand form. Um, and if you have uh, questions, you can just mail them to me. My email address is very easy to remember, sdlmicrosoft.com. Yeah, question. Yeah, uh, so again, yeah. going back to those nested capture groups, mm -hmm. how are they uh, counted? Um, they're counted in order of the left parenthesis. Okay. So if they're nested, the outer one is first. That's how they're unambiguously identified. Yeah, Eric. And of course, I have to put in a plug here for my own stuff. Yeah, Boost um, Expressive is really cool. I've not yet gotten a chance to play with it, but I really want to do all of this and a lot more and do it faster than Boost Regex and uh, use Boost Expressive. They do very different things because Boost Regex is compiling an NFA at runtime, and Boost Expressive is, it has both a compile time and a runtime, mode, right? So at compile time, it's obviously going to run rings around uh, instead of Regex. Is there another question over there? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Performance. <coughs> That. So, um, if I've got a very, very large um, block of text that I'm scanning, mm -hmm. what's the best way to, to uh, make the performance max? Well, there's a flag you can pass to regex um, called optimize. That's a hint when you construct it. It says, 
For some reason, I really care about the importance of matching. Take as much time as you need during the actual construction of the regex, because I'm going to hammer you with some horribly long string or a million strings over and over. Um, what that's intended to mean, um, in addition to potentially eliminating any redundancies in your regex, is to run a well-known algorithm that converts your uh, non-deterministic finite automaton to a deterministic one, which consumes more space, potentially exponentially more, um, but can run extremely fast. Uh, unfortunately, VC has not implemented that yet. Um, GCC still doesn't have a regex in libc++ as far as I've seen. I don't know about libc++. Um, and I don't even think Boost does anything special with regex optimized, but my knowledge could be out of date. So, um, other than that, it's a quality of implementation issue as to how fast your matching is. Uh, Boost regex is very fast in some cases. Um, there's only a, a, and Sturge regex in VC is also fast, but there's cases where one implementation is slower, like VC regex has problems with um, heavily alternated regexes. So if you say ooh or bar or baz, our regex implementation doesn't like that as much as boost regex. So we're going to try to improve over time. The, I have a performance related question. Mm -hmm. The amount of time it takes to build regex, mm -hmm. the actually compile it, if you will, yeah. um, <coughs> relative to the amount of time it takes to do the search. Usually, the, you can think of the building of regex as relatively fast. It's a, Fair number of dynamic memory allocations of nodes, but if your regex isn't like you know 1024 characters, it's not going to be that long. Um, it's only if you pass that special optimized flag and if it did something that would take a while. Certainly, don't think of it as like you know hundreds of milliseconds. No, it's not going to take that long. But it's not something you want to do every single loop. Lift it out if you can. Think of it as like constructing an extra expensive stood string, and that's roughly about right. Great. Any other questions? Yeah. Any plans trying to get on par with Boost Expressive by using ConstExpert? ConstExpert. You'd have to ask the committee about that. If the standard puts ConstExpert on there, we'll slap it on there as soon as uh, the compiler gets it. I actually don't think ConstExpert is really applicable to regex, just because regex is described in terms, in terms of this NFA. That's like relentlessly runtime stuff. There's really nothing in compile time that regex could do, given that its input is a string literal. Um, Expressive has just a totally different syntax that allows it to work at the compile time. So I think this is probably one of the most resistant areas in the entire SDL uh, to context expert. Uh, yeah? There was a talk a couple of years ago by a guy who took the uh, string literal at compile time mm -hmm. and parsed it. Oh, and cracked it open? <laughs> Perhaps someday. Uh, Chandler. Oh, sure. String literal parsing is one of the classical ways of writing complex programs. So. OK. OK, perhaps. Um, I, I, I feel sorry for the compiler author who would have a parse uh, Constex for applied regex. <laughs> but I, I make my living by torturing compiler writers, so now I, I kind of need to go off and do it. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so sometimes in Perl, we write cute one-liners from the command line itself and execute it. Uh, how well do you think, like, you know, from a user's point of view, whether he'll be, like, I mean, can we do the same thing here? You can write just a wrapper program that'll accept a regex from, you know, argv1 and then an input string and then replace it. Very easy. Um, you know, the whole language itself isn't like Perl, but the grammar of the regex itself is substantially similar to Perl. Perl. And it was identical, essentially, as of like Perl 5, but Perl has evolved since then. That's the look behind assertions and whatever. Um, the, the other thing that people, newbies, and uh, apparently nobody here is, often expect from regex is like sed syntax, where you've got s slash, whatever. All of that is specific to sed. Um, it's actually the core of the regular expression is what uh, Sturd or Boost Regex uses, uh, plus uh, the Regex replace algorithm. Anything else? Cool, dinner time.